Hello everybody, this is Crystal. Welcome to my channel. I hope everybody is doing well. So today I am going to be I'm showing you how to make the blanket there that you've seen in the picture. Now if you do follow my channel uh, rather closely, you will know that I already have a tutorial for this particular stained glass granny square. Um, I made it I think a couple months ago maybe um, but I so I'm not gonna do the tutorial again because it's very long but I will link the tutorial to this specific square specific square in the description box so you can follow that and then come back here and I'll show you how to sew them together and put this border on that uh, matches the granny squares so what, what do you think? I think it's quite beautiful. So I'll go ahead and give you the specs on the blanket. So the blanket, this particular blanket here, measures 46 by 60. And it's made with 12 squares. So when you go, if, you, if, you're, if you're doing this, and you go follow that tutorial, you'll need to make 12 squares exactly the same way that it's done in that video. With, you know, with the same hook and the same um, weight yarn. It's four weight yarn, all right? So, and then once you get your 12 squares made, you can make them in any color that you want. Um, then this video here will show you how to sew them together and add a beautiful matching border. It's a spectacular, spectacular blanket. I do uh, believe it would <laughs> benefit from I do believe most granny squares benefit from being blocked, but I don't block anything because I'm lazy. But yes, if <laughs> if it was blocked, it would be nicely, nicely lined up. Everything would be completely square. If you're a blocker, I highly recommend it. If you're not, I don't recommend, I mean, I don't do it. So, I mean, it's not that <laughs> important to me enough to block it, but here's the border that we're going to be doing. So why don't we go ahead and get started on it? Okay, so I'm going to be showing you here. I have two squares here, and I'm going to show you how to sew um, your 12 squares together with these two squares, and then I'm going to show you how to add that border on it. Now, um, in that particular video that you watched for the squares, um, we used an eye, which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. We will be using the same hook for the border. Um, and in that particular video, the color the uh, multicolored yarn that you see I'm going to be using the same yarn as well for the border and it is ice yarns Picasso rainbow now they have two different rainbows this is the one that I that I used six four six two six but you don't have to use this it is just a four weight um, yarn so any four weight yarn will work um, and then the yarn that was used in that, the black yarn that was used in that particular tuto tutorial of the Granny Square was um, some Premier Basic. Um, but for the blanket that you just saw, I used Red Heart Super Saver. Again, just a medium weight um, number four acrylic yarn. So uh, regardless of... Uh, you can use any colors you want just to make sure that they're four weight yarns to achieve to you know achieve the same size and everything like that so okay so we got it you got your 12 squares made and they are going to be put in um, order three by four so i don't know why that pom-poms on there three across the bottom you know or three uh is a width and then four tall that's how they get sewn together all right now you can sew your grannies in any manner that you want i'll show you how i sewed mine which like i said you you don't have to do it the way that i did it you can do it any way you want a lot of people sew things differently but i'll go ahead and show you so you got your 12 squares made and you got them lined up three by four okay now this is generally the way that i sew i leave one right side up and the other i put back side what is up with these pom-poms i'm making a christmas tree that's what it is i'm putting them pom-poms on it all right 
And then what I do is, generally when I sew grannies, this is my most common way. So we put, when we bordered it with this um, outline here of this color, I'm going to sew it together with the same multicolored yarn. I'm going to go in the middle stitch of that group of three on each of these. Now if you see, each of these has a, each loop has a front loop and a back loop, each stitch. So I'm going to go in the middle stitch of this first one and I'm going to go through the back loop only. And then, or I'm sorry, the front loop only with my yarn needle and a piece of yarn. Like that. And then I'm going to take the middle stitch of the back and I'm going to go through the back loop of that one. And then I'm going to pull it through. And that's what I'm going to be doing the whole way is I'm going to be doing back around this way, the front loop of the back square and the back loop of the square that's closest to you. The front loop of the square that's closest to you. Sorry about that. And pulling it through like that. And then again, front loop on the first square only and a back loop only on the back square. Moving right along, back again and we go front or back loop on the back square and then front loop on the front square. So we're only going through one loop on each square. Back loop, or I'm sorry, front loop on the front square, back loop on the back square. Back loop on the back square, front loop on the front square. And we're going to do this all the way down. And this is how we sew up all of our pieces. Um, so you just keep sewing them like this. If this is the way you choose to sew them, you don't, you know, like I said, people sew things many different ways. It really doesn't matter. As long as they achieve the same effect that they're sewn together, right? Um, so I'm going to do this all the way down. And it would be, you want to do it all your squares the same way. However you're sewing them. Three rows of four. So 12 squares total. And as you can see, the way I'm doing it. When I flip it right side out, it creates a ridge there. Now, if you don't like the look of that ridge, I mean, you can sew it. There's many different ways to sew, um, but that's just the way it was done for this particular blanket. So, go ahead and sew your sew your blanket up but in whatever manner you're sewing it. Three by four. Get your 12 squares all sewn up. And then we will do the border. All right, so you got all your pieces sewn together. You got three, 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 and three. So three by four, 12 squares. Now I will also put a link to a tutorial I have of sewing granny squares to better. Uh, sewing granny squares together in the same manner in case you feel like I didn't give you enough information here that will give you uh, more information on it if you want to check that one out all right so we're gonna go ahead and start the border on on this bad boy now remember yours is gonna be a lot bigger than than uh, it's gonna be as big as the one in a picture this one's on a smaller scale so using the multicolored yarn we'll start row one of the border okay so we're gonna start in the middle single crochet in the corner in the middle single crochet there's three in the corner, in the middle one, go through both loops there, and pull your yarn through, like that. And now we are going to do chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And we are going to put a, go back into that same stitch, we're gonna work a single crochet, a chain of two, and another single crochet into the same stitch. So that is how we're going to do the four corners for row one. 
And then we're going to work across and we're going to put one single crochet into every single stitch. Now there is one important thing that you have to keep track of is how many single crochets you have in between your chain two spaces. You have to have an odd number between the, each of the chain two spaces. So what I'm going to do is go across here this first square working one single crochet in every stitch. And then when I get near the end, I'm going to count my single crochets to make sure I have an odd number between the chain two spaces. And that's very important. It's a must. Um, when you do borders, um, some borders call for different multiples. This one right here needs to be an odd number. So I'll meet back up with you when I get to the stitch before the middle single crochet at the corner, okay? All right, so what I've done is I've counted my, I've made it to, I didn't go into it yet, but here is the next uh, middle stitch of that group of three. I haven't, I haven't went into it yet. So what I've done is I stopped and I counted my single crochets. So we don't count the one that's on this side of the chain two space. We count the one that's on the other side as number one because we got to have odd numbers between the chain two spaces. So this stitch is going to count for this row. So count with the first, counting the single crochet right after the chain two space, you want to count all the way across. And when you get to your middle stitch here of your group of three at the next corner, you want to have an even number because when you go into this middle stitch and do a single crochet, chain two single crochet, that will make it an odd number because you're adding one more single crochet to the row before the chain two space. So I do have an even number of stitches now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my corner. So when I put this single crochet in here, there we go. That just made my even number odd. So now I have an odd number of single crochets and I'm going to chain two and go back into the same spot and do a, another single crochet. So now I have an odd number between this chain two space and this chain two space. Remember that is extremely important to have an odd number. Now if you didn't have an odd number, say, say you, it came out to where, um, this is just an example I'm going to show you. Say it came out to where you were you were going to end up having an even number of stitches. So what you would want to do is just do a decrease here at, the, at over the last two before your middle one, a single crochet decrease. So go. This is if if it was going to end up an even number. Go into the stitch, not drop a loop, and then the next one and drop a loop, and then you would go into your middle stitch and do your single crochet chain two and single crochet. And then that would give you an odd number. Now remember that was the only case if you were was in, gonna end up in an even number. But I didn't have that problem. Luckily, most of the time I never get this. <laughs> I always have to do some alterations and that's not to say I'm not going to have to my next time around here. Let me go ahead and redo what I just did here. All right, so now I'm gonna start again going down uh the doing the same thing and remember it has to be an odd number so if you want to keep count as you go remember we count this one first this counts as one because we used this one over here on the other side of the chain two space for this side to make it an odd number so this would be number one and we would just go across all the way making sure when we get to the next corner space that after we do our single crochet chain two single crochet that we're going to have an odd number of single crochets between our chain two spaces now i'm going to continue here across 
and I'll show you kind of what I do when I get to a spot like this. All right, when I get to a place that where it's been sewn together, I just kind of do my best. I kind of will just go and try to, this part is just kind of doing your best to get your single crochets evenly spaced. I'll even kind of do one in the, in this space. If you want, you can actually do a half double right down here and that'll kind of bring that up a little taller so it's even there. And then you just start kind of doing your single crochets again. If that helps out because, you know, it has that little dip in it. There we go. And you just want to do that all the way across. If you didn't have as big a dip as I did in a, in a single worked fine, you, you, you could have just used a single. But mine had kind of a big dip down. So I used that half, that half double to kind of bring it up to the same height. Now you just continue this all the way until you get to your next corner. Remember to keep count of the number of stitches that you have. When you get to your next corner, you're going to have to have an odd number of stitches between your chain two spaces, okay? All right, so I've come to the middle stitch of my group of three at the next corner. And when I do my single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that spot, I will have an odd number of stitches in between my chain two spaces. So again, this is what we're gonna do all the way around. Just making sure that you have an odd number in between the chain two spaces. In each of the four corners, the middle single crochet of the group of three is where you put a single crochet, a chain two, and a single crochet. And we're gonna continue this all around the blanket until we get back to our starting point. All right, so we made it back to the beginning and you have counted and ensure that you have odd numbers between each of the four chain two spaces. Go ahead and end by slip stitching into your first single crochet like that. And then we can tie this collar off like that. Now we're gonna, I'm going, we're gonna for row two of the border, we're gonna bring in the black yarn and we're just going to repeat what we just did with the multicolored yarn. It's going to be the exact same thing. Um, and if you ensured that you had odd numbers in between each of your chain two spaces on row one, doing the same thing on row two will also ensure that you have an odd number. You will have an odd number as long as you kept count correctly. So go ahead and start in that chain two space chain one go back in it and we're going to do a single crochet a chain of two and then another single crochet now remember to get this first one because it hides and single crochet into it and i'm just going to repeat with the black yarn what we just did with a multicolored yarn single crochet in every stitch and Every chain two space gets a single crochet, a chain two and a single crochet, ensuring that you have an odd number in between each of the chain two spaces. So I'll meet back up with you when I make it to the end of row two of our border. All right, so I've made it back to my starting point and you just wanna go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first single crochet. And we will switch colors again. Well. Okay. Now, we're going to be working bobbles now. Now bobbles are uh, worked on the reverse side, so you have to turn your work over 
and you can start in any chain two space that you like. Okay, so now we're on the back side of our work and we're gonna bring in the multicolored yarn for the bobbles. So, and any, remember, back side of your work, back side of your work, we turned it. And we're gonna work in any one of these chain two spaces here. And we're gonna start our yarn and we're gonna chain one and we're gonna go back into the chain two space and we're gonna work a single crochet, a chain of two, and a single crochet into the chain two space. Now in the next stitch, we're going to be working a bobble in the same manner that we worked the bobbles for the squares. A double crochet of five together bobble into the next stitch. You should have six loops that remain and yarn over and go through all six. Give it a tug and then we're going to single crochet directly into the next stitch. Just like that. And that's what we're going to repeat all the way across until we get to our next um, chain two space. So again, bobble into the next stitch. And single into the next. Bobble into the next. And single into the next and I will meet see now your bobbles they show up on the opposite side like they're supposed to or on the front side of your work and I am going to repeat this pattern until we get to our next chain two space all right so I made it to my next chain two space um, and this is why it was important that you had an odd number your last stitch there before the chain two space needed to be a bobble so I went ahead and did a bobble right there in that last stitch and now I'm at my chain two space. So I'm gonna go into the chain two space and I'm gonna work a single crochet, a chain of two and another single crochet into that chain two space. And then again, I'm gonna start out with my first stitch being a bobble. So this is what I'm going to repeat all the way around. Bobble, single crochet, bobble, single crochet, bobble, single crochet. And you should, all, when you get to the chain two space, it'll be a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And when you go off to start another row after the chain two space, you should always start with the bobble and your row should always end with the bobble before the chain two space. All right, so keep going all the way around until we make it back to our starting point. All right, so you made it all the way back to your starting point and your last stitch should have been a bobble. You wanna go ahead and end by slip stitching into your first single crochet here in the corner. So you did the single crochet, chain two single crochet, slip stitch into that first single crochet. And then we can tie this off and we will be finished with the colored portion of the yarn. And that will end row three. That was the longest row ever, huh? <laughs> All right, to begin row four, we need to turn our work back over to the right side. So now we have the right side of our work here 
and the bobbles are facing the right side. So now we're going to use the black yarn again. Okay. We are going to work into the chain two space. Any chain two space is fine. We're going to go into it. This time we're going to chain one. And we are going to work a half double crochet into the chain two space. A chain of two and another half double crochet back into the chain two space like that. All right, so we got what we're going to do now is we are going to half double crochet into this single crochet right here. And then we're going to half double crochet on top of the bobble. So it's right back here. And now we're going to start the repeat of the row. We're going to do a drop double crochet. So what that means is we're going to be working two rows below, which is this single crochet that we worked in black. So what we're going to do is do a double crochet down here into this stitch here that this single crochet is in. See what I mean? So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go into not not this single crochet here. This one that down below that it's in. So we're doing a drop double crochet because we're dropping down a row. Going into that spot and then do a double crochet. Just like that. And then we're going to do a half double crochet into the top of the next bobble. And this is what we're going to repeat. So again, we're going to go in between the next bobbles and you'll see this single crochet. The row right down here where the black is that the single crochet is in, we're going to do a double crochet, drop double, so we double crochet all the way down into that same spot and work a double crochet that and then half double crochet into the top of the next bobble and we're going to repeat that again so in between the next two bobbles you see the single crochet and the row below where the single crochet is attached to that's where we're going to double crochet into so that's our drop double pull it up and do a double crochet half double into the top of the next bobble. And we're going to repeat this until we get to our next chain two space. So one more time in between the two bobbles, you see the single crochet. We go down into the row below here, the black row, and do a drop double in that same spot that we did that single crochet into. So go right in there and do a double crochet and then a half double into the top of the next bobble. Now we're going to repeat this pattern until we get to our next chain two space. And after this, there's one more row <laughs> and then we'll be finished. So it's just a drop double and then a half double on top of the bobble. I'll meet back up with you at our next chain two space. All right, so when you make it to your next corner, uh, right here, I just did a half double crochet in the top of the bobble. Now we're not going to drop down and do any more drop doubles. We are just going to do a single crochet into the, I'm sorry, a half double crochet into the next single crochet, and then a half double into the chain two space. A chain of two and another half double into the chain two space and this is what we're going to repeat around so again we would start out by putting a half double into the next single crochet and then a half double on top of the next bobble and now we would start our repeat of doing the drop double right down into this stitch here we double crochet down into this stitch 
I'll draw it up and then half double into the top of the next bobble and then drop double down right here into this stitch the row of black down there uh double yeah drop double and then half double and top of the bobble so we're just doing the same thing we did on the other side drop double right down here into the same stitch that, that single crochet is going into and then a half double and top of the bobble so we're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around until we make it back to our starting point all right so i've made it to the end of row four of the border and i just half double crocheted in top of that bobble so what i'm going to just do now is half double crochet into the next single and i'm going to end by slip stitching into the first half double crochet here in the beginning and now we're going to do one more row on our border so we are going to slip stitch one time to our chain two space we're going to chain one and we're going to go back into this and we're going to work one double crochet chain two and one double crochet so this final row is just a row of double crochets all the way around so we're just going to be putting one double crochet into every stitch all the way around into the top of every stitch and then when you get to the corners it's one double chain two and one double in each of the corners and this will be our final row very simple and that that'll be it so remember this is the final row row five of the border it's just one double crochet in every stitch and then in each of the four corners it gets one double a chain two and one double and then you'll just end with a slip stitch into your first double crochet tie off hide any remaining tails that you might have and that is a beautiful border there let me move this out of the way here so i can bring up my blanket that is finished and we can admire it how about that there we go there we go so that's what she starts to look like beautiful 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 piece of stained glass work now remember you could do it in any color you want you do not have to use these colors it does not even have to be stained glass you could use any colors you choose so thank you for watching and i hope that you enjoyed my tutorial i would love to see um, so people make this blanket. So if you do make this, please show me a picture on my Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page. There'll be a link to that below in the description box. And don't forget there's a link to how to make this square. And I'll also put a link of how to sew granny square. How I how to sew granny squares like I showed you in the beginning. But in case, like I said, you didn't get enough info on what I showed you. Um, there is a video on that so look for that and also one more thing there is a link um to over a thousand crochet tutorials they were all free all there for you to enjoy please um look at them crochet with them and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out give me a like and a, and a comment below that always helps me out until next time take care bye guys